So <clears throat> this is the question I get posed from people who haven't been in the lifestyle. They'll come to me and they'll say, so I feel like if I go into the lifestyle that I could possibly go to hell. Is that true? They bring the gospel to me. And then I say, well, what does the Bible say? And then they tell me, well, the Bible says that if I you know, reject Christ and do this, um, if I'm not living according to the way that he's asking me to, then I'm going to go to hell. And I said, well, that, well, you just answered your own question, you know, and they'll go, well, if I go into the lifestyle and I reject the Lord, then will I be able to enjoy it? And I say, well, do you know the Lord now? And they'll go, oh, yeah, I know the Lord now. I'll say, well, then no, because the Lord does not leave you. It says that he's given this despo- this de- um, deposit for salvation, and he's he will never you will never be too far away from him. There's nowhere you can run. You can't get away from him. He will always find you. He will always be there for you. He will not let you enjoy your sin. He won't let you enjoy um, living apart from him because you were made for him. And so these are the questions that I get. People will say, "Can I basically can I outrun God if I can outrun my parents, my friends, my church, and all of this?" Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm sorry, but no. I've tried outrunning him. You can't outrun him. He mm-hmm. will keep after you. He'll he'll um, he'll refresh your conscience. Mm-hmm. You just can't. And mm-hmm. so these are some of the things that we talk about um, that they actually ask me. This is something that they have led that felt led to ask me, and. Um, and they're asking because of my personal experience. I mean, this is what mm-hmm. I've experienced. Um, he he just doesn't leave his children alone. He cares too much for them. Yeah. He'll wait patiently and keep after. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, I, I'm wondering if it's part of it is these younger generations that uh, are casting such a broad net. I mean, yes. so many people are exposed yes. to some idealized version of the gay community. I can picture tons of yes. people thinking, oh, wow, if this is like, you know, mm-hmm. everyone has a great body and they, they have such great clothes and they all seem to be fun and, and everybody loves them. So let me become part of it. But I don't actually want to do anything. You know, yes. it's kind of weird. Also, because we are in a situation where being gay is there's a there's an incentive to it. I mean, yes. you get things for being gay. And I don't mm-hmm. think it was like that when I grew up or when you grew up, because you're still no. old enough that you remember growing up when you didn't get extra points for being gay. You, yes. you, you know, <clears throat> yeah, you got bullied. Um, and there were other things that happened. Yeah. So it was not, a, not only was it not approved of, but you felt very isolated. You couldn't tell anyone. Right. You didn't want to bring people into your mess, but yeah, th- this is something where one thing that, um, that these, um, liberal things have happened, you know, with gay marriage, is it's opened the door for younger and younger people to voice the way they've been feeling where they didn't feel like they could. And so, well, I, when we were in Austin, there were two reporters from a a, a very liberal paper called the Mm -hmm. Austin Chronicle. And, um, when we had given a presentation, what? I love Austin. Beautiful town. Really? Oh, okay. Well, we were there. We, we gave a presentation at a library about the problems with the, the LGBT curriculum in the schools. And there were these two activists there who, you know, they got very aggressive with us. And they mm-hmm. said, um, when we teach people to be accepting of LGBT relationships, we're not teaching them about sex. And I said, yeah, yeah you are. And they said, yeah. no, we're not. And I'm, I was thinking, well, then that's even worse because you're, you're giving them uh, a cultural hope and a social hope that's totally uh, disconnected from the yeah actual physical reality of what it does to your body and and everything else. So that's worse than if you were to go and give them a diagram of, of sodomy, uh, uh, you know, in kindergarten, because then at least they get a graphic, pretty shocking, you know, description Mm -hmm. of it. It's, it's bad to lure them in and then not have them know exactly what they're getting into. 